I've had a lot of requests to test diesel heaters that cost anywhere from $95 up to $250, and we have several brands to test. Well, let's get the testing underway and see which brand is the best. And the first test will measure the fuel efficiency of a diesel heater. We'll also see which one makes the most heat. Then we'll see if the diesel heaters will run on vegetable oil as well as use motor oil. Finally, we'll do a teardown to see if all the diesel heaters are the same. At a price of only $95, the least expensive diesel heater we'll be testing is made by Civil. You can use this in an RV, truck, boat, camper, car, trailer, motorhome, or caravans. They claim it's equipped with a silent fan and an oil pump featuring an improved low frequency pulse. It's supposed to deliver 8,000 kilowatts, which works out to just over 27,000 BTUs. It even comes with a remote control. It has an all-in-one 12 volt LCD display. They claim it has a silencer to keep the noise down and fast heating. And the Civil is made in China. It includes an exhaust hose, which is on the bottom side of the heater. It also includes a bunch of extra hardware, including a hose clamp and some wires that are needed to supply power to the unit. It comes with a hose for the air intake as well as the air outlet. And the Civil is pretty light at just over 15 pounds. The legs for the bottom of the heater just slide into place. Let's go ahead and put this thing together beginning with the exhaust silencer, which is sort of like a muffler. One of these is for the intake and the other is for the exhaust. According to the diagram, the exhaust appears to be closest to the air outlet, which is on the right side of the machine. The other opening is for the air intake, which is very close to the fuel line. The exhaust pipe slides right into position and can be secured with the hose clamp. The diesel heater does require a 12 volt power source. I have an extra 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter that I'll be using. I'll also be using a power analyzer so we can keep track of the 12 volt energy use. Let's see how this solar power station performs as our 12 volt power source and the unit is powering up. Let's go ahead and add a half gallon of diesel fuel. There is a fuel window on the side of the machine. We just added a half gallon of fuel and it's at the top of the window. The fuel tank should have at least a one gallon fuel capacity so the window only shows when you're about a half gallon from running out. The instructions are just not very easy to understand. So let's see if we can get this thing going. I'll press the okay and the down arrow at the same time and then I'll press the button with the up arrow. And the machine is powering up on the highest heat setting of level 10. The fuel pump does make a clicking sound which is pretty loud. And the silver heater is already around 80 watts as the heating element is heating up. And now the unit is using around 100 watts, which is reaching the max capacity for our power station. Unfortunately, there's a lot of voltage drop and the power station can't keep up with the diesel generator. The error code on the display is showing E-01. According to the operator's manual, we need to boost the supply voltage. For now, let's just go ahead and switch over to a 120 volt AC to 12 volt DC power converter that can handle up to 200 watts. Okay, fortunately, it looks like we're back in business. And there's a lot of smoke coming out of the exhaust while this thing is warming up. No worries, the shop is very well ventilated and I have a whole house fan pulling all the exhaust out of the shop. Once the unit warmed up, no more smoke. I will properly ventilate the exhaust before we get into some serious testing. And the sound meter is right next to the heater and it isn't too loud at around 74 decibels. And the civil is fully warmed up in only about five minutes, which seems pretty quick. Now that the heater is fully warmed up, it's holding steady at around 47 watts. And the civil is moving quite a bit of air at very close to 34 miles per hour and the exhaust is very hot at around 350 degrees fahrenheit and the heating element just inside the air outlet is very close to 375 degrees fahrenheit i've placed a thermal probe out in front of the vent on the highest heat setting the air temperature is very close to 280 degrees fahrenheit Let's lower the heat setting down to the lowest level. And the noise level from the fan is very close to 60 decibels, which is pretty quiet. And the air outlet airspeed is still moving quite a bit of air at around 16 miles per hour. On low heat, the air outlet temperature is pretty hot at around 277 degrees Fahrenheit. And this remote control is pretty handy. The up and down arrows adjust the heat setting and it can also be used to power down the unit. And the Civil took just over four minutes to run its cool down cycle and then power off. At a price of $118 is this Viver brand. Just like the Civil, the Viver is rated for 8,000 kilowatts. It includes a remote control. Just like the Civil, the Viver is rated for 8 kilowatts. It even includes Bluetooth app control. They claim that it warms up in under 10 minutes. There are two windows on both sides of the machine so you can keep track of how much fuel usage has taken place. On 1.3 gallons of fuel, it's supposed to provide continuous heat for eight hours. We'll take a look under the hood of the machine later in the video. And the Vivor is made in China. And the Viver weighs 17.43 pounds. The Viver comes with an air inlet hose and a pipe for the air outlet. The exhaust pipe and the muffler look the same as the Civil's. Intake is on the left and the exhaust port is on the right. Even with a 90 degree bend, there's not enough clearance between the heater and the table. Now that the muffler's in place, let's place a couple of boards underneath the machine to allow for some exhaust clearance. Just like the Civil, let's add a half gallon of diesel fuel. Two quarts of fuel is showing one and three quarter liters, which is close enough to accurate. I don't show it, but the red wire is for the positive power supply and the black wire is for the negative. And the Viver has a much easier start sequence. Once you push the power button, the unit powers on and begins warming up immediately. I did change the unit from automatic mode to manual mode so that I have control over the vent temperature and fan speed. 
and the Viva is using quite a bit of electricity during the warm-up cycle, topping out at around 137 watts. Unlike the Civil, the Viva is burning a lot cleaner and there's very little exhaust smoke. On the highest fan speed, the air outlet airspeed is the same as the Civil's at around 34 miles per hour. And the Viva is pretty much the same loudness as the Civil at around 74 decibels. The Viva is fully warmed up and the energy use is very close to 44 watts, which is just a little bit less than the Civil. And the exhaust pipe temperature is pretty hot at around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Just inside the air inlet, the heating element is around 375 degrees Fahrenheit. The air coming out of the vent is also pretty hot at around 240 degrees Fahrenheit. The exhaust appears to be delivering a really clean burn without any visible smoke. Let's go ahead and lower the fan speed to the lowest fan speed setting. And the energy use is pretty low at around 10 watts on the lowest fan speed. It's also making a lot less noise at 61 decibels, which is about the same as the Civil. 8.5 meters per second works out to around 19 miles per hour for the air outlet. The cooldown cycle took very close to five minutes, which is about the same as the Civil. The Viva does communicate with the user when the heater is powering on and off, as well as when it's finished with the cooldown cycle. At a price of $200 is this H Calorie brand. Just like the previous two brands, it's designed to deliver 8 kilowatts. They claim it heats up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit within 10 minutes. Fuel consumption rates are as low as 0.02 gallons per hour. There's a storage compartment for the remote control to keep it from becoming lost when you're on the go with the heater. The main control board also has a protective cover. What's really nice is that the air intake filter as well as the exhaust are already attached. The exhaust elbow is definitely a much better setup compared to the corrugated pipe. To access the fuel tank, you do have to unbuckle and then open the cover on the heater. And the H calorie does have a fuel window on the very front of the unit. The muffler looks exactly the same as the ones that came with the previous two brands. Unlike the Civil and the Viva, the H calorie does include a 110 volt AC to DC power supply as well as a 12 volt DC power supply, which is a huge advantage. And the H calorie weighs just over 16 pounds. Let's go ahead and install the exhaust. Having the exhaust elbow already installed underneath the heater really makes things easy. I'll add right at a half gallon of diesel fuel. And the H calorie definitely has the best set of instructions so far and seems pretty easy to follow. We'll take apart the heaters later, but the air enters the inlet with the help of a fan. Next to the fan is a flame retardant impeller, ignition plug, combustion chamber, safety plug, heating zone, and then the air outlet. Let's go ahead and power up the heater. During the warm-up cycle, the H calorie reached a peak power demand of 140 watts, which is about the same as the Viva. There's a small amount of exhaust smoke, but a lot less than the Civil. The fuel pump seems about as loud as the Viva's, with the fuel pump at around 60 decibels. And the H calorie is fully warmed up in about five minutes, the same as the Viva and the Civil. And the plastic case is helping keep the noise down just a little at 69.4 decibels and the highest fan speed, which is the least noisy heater so far. And the H calorie is moving air at about 39 miles per hour, the fastest moving air yet. It's also making some serious heat at around 300 degrees Fahrenheit at the air outlet. The heating element is around 430 degrees Fahrenheit in the exhaust exhaust pipe is at around 209. On the highest fan speed, it's around 49 watts, which is 2 watts more than the Viva. On the lowest fan speed, air is moving at around 20 miles per hour. The H calorie is only using around 12 watts on the lowest fan speed setting, which is pretty good. And 62.4 decibels on the lowest fan speed is just a little noisier than the Civil and the Viva. On the lowest fan speed, air is coming out of the outlet at around 315 degrees Fahrenheit, the hottest yet. Let's go ahead and power down the heater. And it took just over four minutes for the H calorie to cool down and then power down. At a price of $250, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by LF Bros. It's an all-in-one 110-volt, 12- and 24-volt, 5-kilowatt diesel heater. On the lowest heat setting, around 4,700 BTUs. The highest heat setting, 17,000. There's a fuel window on the front of the machine. And the LF Bros is made in China. Just like with the H calorie, the intake as well as the exhaust have already been plumbed. Comes with remote control and LCD screen. The extras seem pretty standard on all these heaters with hose clamps, wiring for 12 volt power supply, and an exhaust pipe. Just like the H calorie, the LF Bros kit does come with an AC to DC power adapter for the convenience of using a 120 volt power source. The kit also includes a pipe for the air outlet. The LF Bros definitely has the best set of instructions and they're very easy to understand. Step one is to add fuel. Step two is to provide a power source to the unit. Step three is to power on the unit using the control pad or the remote control. They show heat coming out in step four. And the LF Bros is the heaviest yet at 19.23 pounds. The exhaust setup includes a connector pipe that joins the exhaust pipe to the exhaust outlet, which seems like a pretty secure setup. The power supply attaches to the back of the machine with black on negative and red on positive. I've added a half gallon of fuel and the LF Bros is ready for action. Just like the instructions indicate, 
Press the on button on the remote just one time and the Olaf Bros is powering up. And the fuel pump makes a clicking sound with a peak noise level of just under 57 decibels. And the Olaf Bros only went up to 116 watts during the warm up cycle or about 24 watts less than the H calorie. The exhaust did remain very clean during the entire warm up cycle. On the highest heat and fan speed setting, very close to 74 decibels. And the Olaf Bros is warmed up in very close to five minutes, the same amount of time as the previous three brands. And the Olaf Bros is delivering the highest air speed yet at close to 41 miles per Hour. The extra airspeed is using a little bit more electricity than the other three brands at 54 watts. And the air coming out of the vent is the hottest yet at 326.1 degrees Fahrenheit. The actual heating element is around 400 degrees Fahrenheit and the exhaust pipe is around 240. Let's go ahead and lower the heat setting to the lowest level. And 13.6 watts on the lowest heat setting will allow the battery bank to run for a very long time. And 61.6 decibels is just a little bit less noisy than the H calorie. On low heat, around 262 degrees Fahrenheit at the air out. Outlet. And 23.43 miles per hour on the lowest fan speed is the fastest yet. Let's go ahead and power down the heater. And the LF Bros took right at four and a half minutes to run the cool down cycle and then power off. All of the heaters took about the same amount of time to warm up at around five minutes. However, the Civil is definitely the smokiest in the lineup during the warm up cycle. Very little smoke comes from the Viva and the H Calorie, and the LF Bros is the cleanest with no visible smoke. The H Calorie is the quietest in the lineup on high fan speed at 69.4 decibels. The other three brands were all pretty close to the same. On low heat, the amount of noise varied from 60 to 62.4 decibels, which isn't too bad. Energy use on the highest fan speed varied from 44 to 54 watts. Not surprisingly, the heaters that use the most electricity also move the most air with the LF Bros moving air at 41 miles per hour. It's perfect weather for putting these heaters to the test with the outside temperature at 23.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the 800 square foot shop, it's at 53.8 degrees and getting cooler by the minute. So let's plug in the AC to DC adapter into this battery bank to see how each of the diesel heaters perform in a 35 minute test. This thermometer is located 12 feet in front of the diesel heater vent. So this thermometer is about 15 feet away in a perpendicular orientation for the overall room temperature. The exhaust will be venting outside the shop. And the Civil is powered up and it's warming up. The Civil has had five minutes to warm up and another five minutes to heat the shop. The thermometer 12 feet in front of the heater increased from 53.8 to 56.1 degrees. The overall shop temperature is now at 55 degrees. At 20 minutes, 59.7 in front of the heater and 56.8 for the overall shop temperature. It's becoming more comfortable inside the shop at 61.2 and 57.9 degrees just 30 minutes into the test. So after a five minute warm up cycle and 30 minutes of heating, the thermometer 12 feet out in front of the vent is at 61.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a 7.9 degree increase. The overall shop temperature increased by 4. 3 degrees for 30 minutes of actual heating time. Let's power down the Civil and test the Viva. Start heating. And the Viva is still warming up and the shop has really cooled down quickly to 50.4 and 50.5 degrees Fahrenheit. At the 10 minute mark and 12 feet in front of the Viva vent, the air temperature is up almost 5 degrees. The overall shop temperature is up from 50.5 to 53.1. At 20 minutes, 59 degrees in the path of the vent and the overall shop temperature is at 55.6. It's a lot more comfortable inside the shop now at 60.6 and 57 degrees at 30 minutes. And the 35 minute test is up and the shop is now at 61.2 and 57.6 degrees. So that's a 10.8 degree increase in front of the vent and an overall shop temperature increase by 7.1 degrees. And the H calories electronics seem very similar to the Vivers. 50.7 degrees, 12 feet in front of the heater and 51.3 for the overall shop temperature. And the H calories performing very similar to the Viva at 55.4 and 54.3 degrees at 10 minutes. At 20 minutes, 58.8 and 57 degrees is still tracking very closely with the Viva. At 30 minutes, the H calorie is slightly ahead of the Viva at 60.6 and 58.1 degrees. And the H calorie barely edges out the Viva by only 0.2 degrees for the overall room temperature. The LF Bros claims to be a 5 kilowatt heater while the others claim 8 kilowatts. And the LF Bros is starting out at 50.4 and 51.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And the LF Bros is performing about the same as the Viva and the H calorie at 55.6 and 54.5 at 10 minutes. At 20 minutes, the LF Bros is gaining some momentum at 59.9 and 58.5 degrees. At 30 minutes, the LF Bros is beginning to pull away from the previous three brands at 62.1 and 59.9 degrees. 
And 35 minutes is up and it's 62.8 degrees, 12 feet in front of the vent, and the overall room temperature is at 60.6. This is definitely not a perfect test since many factors such as a changing outside temperature and an inside temperature starting point can impact the test accuracy. However, the LF Bros did the best by increasing the room temperature by 9.2 degrees after a five minute warm up and 30 minutes of heating. H Calorie and Viva performed very close to the same at 7.3 and 7.1 degrees respectively. The outside high temperature for the day will remain in the 20s. So let's keep heating the shop with the LF Bros. I'll set the clock to 12 to keep track of the time. And it's been right at three hours and 32 minutes and so the shop is pretty comfortable at 69.8 degrees. 12 feet out in front of the vent, it's at 72. And the next test, let's see how long the LF Bros will run on a full tank of fuel. The LF Bros holds very close to five and a half quarts, which is around five liters. I'll set the clock to 12 so we can keep track of how many hours go by. Since I don't have the exhaust plumbed properly, I'll just run the heater outside overnight on the highest heat setting. It's been eight hours and 48 minutes since the test started and the LF Bros is still making heat. The bottom left corner of the display shows that the heater is low on fuel. We're now at nine hours and 16 minutes and the LF Bros just ran out of fuel. On the highest heat setting, a quart of diesel will provide almost two hours of heat, which seems pretty good. Let's try running the Civil on some alternative fuels, but let's first measure how clean the Civil burns on straight diesel. And the Civil is fully warmed up. I'm using a meter that measures combustible gases. And the Civil is actually burning pretty clean at less than 100 parts per million. I ran the Civil completely out of fuel so we can test how the diesel heaters perform on alternative fuels. If there's a power outage during a blizzard and you can't find any diesel, could you just use some vegetable oil? This probably won't work if the vegetable oil is super cold since viscosity may become an issue. Let's add just one cup of vegetable oil. And the fuel pump is pumping, which is a good sign. And here comes the french fried smoke coming from the diesel heater's exhaust. And the silver is powered up and making some heat. Now that the heater is fully warmed up, there's no more visible exhaust smoke. And the vegetable oil is actually burning very clean and the tester is not finding any unburned combustible gases. The E08 code indicates the heater is out of fuel. And the silver ran for about 35 minutes on one cup of vegetable oil, which seems pretty good. What about motor oil or used motor oil mixed with diesel? I'll add about a half cup of each and I'll reset the timer. And there's no visible smoke coming from the exhaust with the used motor oil and diesel blend. And the heater is taking a couple of extra minutes to warm up, but it's almost there. And the heater seems to be burning just as clean as a straight diesel at less than 100 parts per million. And the heater is finally out of fuel at very close to 50 minutes for just over a cup of blended fuel. Let's see if the heater will run on straight used motor oil. And the fuel pump is moving oil into the combustion chamber. And there's no visible smoke coming from the exhaust during the warm up. Unfortunately, the heater is struggling to ignite the motor oil and the meter is showing close to a thousand parts per million. And the heater powered itself down and is now showing that there's a fuel related issue. So let's add some diesel to the tank and we'll see if we can get the heater up and going again. I'll try to mix up the oil and diesel fuel just a little. And the heater is back in action and there's no visible exhaust smoke. So let's go ahead and power down the heater and take a look inside a couple of these heaters. I'll first remove a collar that retains the heater's top cover. Now that the top cover is off, we'll have access to the fan and the control board. Let's go ahead and remove the screws that hold the fuel tank in place and let's remove the exhaust elbow. I'll go ahead and remove the exhaust bracket and the exhaust elbow. I'll drill out the four pop rivets that fasten the heater assembly to the plastic case. The fuel tank and the heater assembly are ready to come out. I'll go ahead and remove the four bolts that fasten the heater assembly to the mounting bracket. And the heater assembly is ready to be removed from the housing. From the fuel tank, this fuel pump transfers fuel into a metal fuel line. The metal fuel line then feeds fuel into a combustion chamber near the glow plug. As fuel is traveling into the combustion chamber, the intake is moving air into the combustion chamber as well. Exhaust fumes then transfer out the port on the left side. The electric fan pulls air into and through the assembly. As air passes across the metal fins, air is heated. Let's go ahead and remove the fan blade. And the inner side of the fan blade has two tiny magnets that create a magnetic field that is detected by a Halifax sensor on the motherboard. Let's go ahead and remove the electric motor. And the inner side of the motor is designed to pull air into the combustion chamber to be ignited. I'll go ahead and remove the glow plug. And all the heat that's created inside the combustion chamber then heats up the aluminum housing or the heat exchanger. I'm pretty sure that this is a temperature sensor that helps the control board maintain the proper temperature. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's go ahead and take apart the Viver. There are four retaining clips that hold the cover onto the Viver. In my opinion, there are two downsides of heaters with a more vertical orientation. The biggest downside is the tip over hazard. The second issue is that the fuel pickup is located on the side of the fuel tank and not underneath. So the heater will not be able to pick up all the fuel that's inside the fuel tank. However, there is a trade-off. If there's solids inside the fuel system, it's likely to settle at the bottom of the fuel tank and it will not get picked up by the fuel system. And the Viver's plastic housing looks exactly the same as the H Calorie plastic housing. A look inside and the heater assembly also looks exactly the same. From what I can tell, all of these brands share the exact same hardware but the controls and software does seem to vary from brand to brand. Running a diesel heater on vegetable oil or motor oil will likely cause a lot of carbon buildup inside
inside the combustion chamber. If I had to make a choice, I'd definitely buy the Civil or the Viva if the price was around $100. I'd also purchase an AC to DC power converter as well as a cigarette lighter power supply cord. This allows for using a 110 volt outlet on a battery bank, generator, or wall outlet. I'd also consider the H calorie if the price was around $150 since it has an AC to DC power converter in the kit. In my opinion, the LF Bros is a very good heater, but it is overpriced at around $250 or more. I'll have to admit these diesel heaters performed a lot better than anticipated. Definitely cheap insurance for that winter storm, or if you just need to heat a small building, it definitely seems like a great option. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewers suggested, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.